Hello children. Today I am going to teach you air and atmosphere from your class 6 chemistry book. So let's start quickly. Children, before seeing the definition of air, let us first understand what air is. Living beings can survive without food or without water for few days, but cannot survive without air. You can feel the pressure of air when the pages of your book flutter when the fan is switched on, right? So air is a mixture of gases which surrounds the earth as atmosphere. Air is present everywhere. Anybody asks you about the occurrence of air? Children, air is present everywhere in the atmosphere and also in the water bodies. Okay? Now, let us look into an activity. Here, what can you see? You can see a glass. Now, is the glass empty? Let's find out with the help of an experiment. Here we have an experiment. Now, what is this experiment? Take an empty glass bottle. Okay, now we don't know actually whether it is really empty or something is inside it. So now turn it upside down. Okay, now dip the open mouth of the bottle into the bucket filled with water and observe the water bottle. Does the water enter the bottle? Probably, you'll find out that the water does not enter the bottle. But when you slightly tilt the bottle, you'll find out bubbles coming out of the bottle and water rushing inside the bottle. Now, why does it happen? This, initially, when you, put, you had put the bottle upside down into the tub of water, water did not fill the bottle because the bottle wasn't empty but it was filled with air okay this water could not enter when it was dipped into the tub of water now when the bottle was tilted the air inside comes out in the form of bubbles now the bottle is empty and so water easily enters into the bottle right so what do you conclude from this experiment? Was the glass or is this bottle empty or is it filled with something? Yes, it's filled with air. So air exists everywhere, even inside an empty bottle, right? Now let us look into the components of air. What are the things that are present in air? Now there are different gases which is present in air by different volumes like nitrogen 78%, oxygen 21%, carbon dioxide 0.04%, inert gases 0.9%. We also have water vapor, dust particles and impurities contained in air. If you represent it with the help of a pie chart, 78% nitrogen as I told you, 21% of oxygen and this 1% is given for the others like the inert gases and the carbon dioxide and the dust particles and the water vapors etc. Alright, so these are the components of air. Now, let us do another activity. What you can see here? You can see here that there is a candle placed in a tub of water and we are putting glasses. You can see we have put a short glass over here and a tall, a little longer version of the same glass over here. You'll find out that slowly this lighted, lighted candle is going to blow, get blown off, right? There will be no more light present in the candle. Why? Because of the absence of air because of the absence of oxygen all right so burning candles goes off after some time when it is covered with airtight jar so air contains oxygen and this oxygen it supports burning so as soon as you cover these burning candles with airtight jars there is no more air and no more oxygen so the candle goes off Uses of different components of air. Just right now we read about, understood about the components of air like nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, carbon dioxide, etc. Now let us see what are their uses. Nitrogen controls burning. 
okay it does not enhances burning it does not support burning but it controls burning without nitrogen everything would continue to burn so it dilutes the effect of oxygen during burning it also helps in the preparation of proteins and proteins are prepared from amino acids and amino acids contain nitrogen as the main element okay now what are, let us see what are the uses of oxygen oxygen is the most important component of air oxygen is the most important component of air plants animals human beings we all need oxygen for respiration okay life is not possible without oxygen so now you must be thinking what is respiration so i'll be telling you about respiration in quite while time oxygen also helps in burning or combustion that means without oxygen burning cannot take place right now we saw now that when we cover the lighted candle with an air tight bottle or a air tight glass which does not contains air and oxygen then the candle goes off okay so from here we would we conclude that oxygen helps in burning or combustion oxygen also plays a role in the process of rusting you must have seen uh, at your home if you just if you can do an experiment experiment on it just take a small nail and just keep it in your washroom at the side somewhere where it can get water and uh, oxygen you'll see after some amount of time it's like a weeks time or 15 days there will be signs of rusting on that iron nail so oxygen also plays a role in the process of rusting Now as I told you let's discuss about respiration what is respiration Respiration is a chemical process in which oxygen is inhaled and that oxygen is used to oxidize glucose to give energy water vapor and carbon dioxide Did it go over your head Don't worry I'll explain you The air which we breathe in is called as inhaled air so basically what we breathe in is oxygen okay major amount of oxygen and the air that we breathe out is the exhaled air the exhaled air contains carbon dioxide and water vapor now from where does this carbon dioxide and water vapor comes just look into this equation we have some stored glucose in our body when we inhale air that is a major portion of oxygen what happens glucose reacts with oxygen and this oxygen oxidizes this glucose and converts into carbon dioxide water vapor and energy all right so we are getting the energy the carbon dioxide and the water vapor is the exhaled air now let's talk about carbon dioxide Carbon dioxide helps the plants to prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis. Now what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis what happens is uh, carbon dioxide combines with water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll to give glucose plus oxygen. Basically photosynthesis is a process by which plants prepare its own food. Okay. So you can see here there's a plant using You see the arrow which is incoming towards the plant using sunlight that is the light energy and the carbon dioxide which is exhaled by us and it is present in the air also what does it do using the carbon dioxide the light energy that is the sunlight the chlorophyll is contained in the leaves of the plant and water and minerals from the soil and the roots what happens takes in all these products and it gives out oxygen which we inhale in return and glucose Okay so that's the food it made so photosynthesis is the process by which a plant prepare their own food okay so what is the essential thing in case of photosynthesis we need sunlight and chlorophyll okay so in absence of sunlight photosynthesis cannot take place now coming to the last component that is the water vapor Water vapor helps us in predicting the climatic condition and provides with moisture for living beings. Simple. Now, this is a lovely topic and we all should be knowing about it. Air pollution. Air pollution occurs when gases 
dust, smoke, odor, they all get into the air and make it unclean. These are harmful to the human beings and are called as pollutants. Do you know that air pollution causes around 1,16,000 of neonatal deaths every year? What are the cause of pollution? Burning of fuel is one cause of this air, air pollution. Smoke from industries, automobile exhaust fumes, all of these are causes of air pollution. How can you prevent? What are the steps to prevent air pollution? We have to stop emissions from the automobile. For that, we have to use unleaded petrol. Use public transport and encourage carpooling. Stop open burning of fuels like coal, wood, etc. Use alternate sources of energy like the solar energy, the wind energy and the water energy. UNESCO report on air pollution tells us that 92% of the people worldwide do not breathe clean air. Air pollution costs the global warm economy $5 trillion every year in welfare costs. Our best efforts to reduce pollution would benefit all of us, not just the cities that we live in. So children, keep the air pollution free by giving your contribution. Prepare yourself with uh, me and let me know how did you like this video. If you please give your feedback in the comment section. And children, if you want me to solve the question answers, please mention it in the comment section. I tell this in almost every video of mine. If you guys are interested in me solving the question answers of the textbook, then only I'll be solving them and uploading. Okay, thank you and take care. Stay safe.